A struggling ventriloquist visits his idol and discovers his horrifying secret. You won't guess what happens next. At a comedy club, a stunning ventriloquist performs. He rattles off zinger after zinger, and the crowd is ablaze with laughs. A young boy in particular is absolutely enthralled by the show. His eyes are wide and his mouth hangs open as he watches the ventriloquist with wonder and delight. After the show, the kid eagerly gets an autograph. The man, Mr. Ingalls, asks the boy, Billy, what he wants to be when he grows up. After such a performance, ventriloquism is the only profession on his mind. Though, his mother quickly interjects, no, he wants to be a doctor. Regardless, Mr. Ingalls promises the boy he can look him up whenever if he needs some tips on honing the craft. Wholesome. Then, we catch a very pleasant view as a woman walks into Mr. Ingalls' room. She invites him out to dinner, but he declines. He's not feeling well. Suddenly, the doll speaks up with its distinct, high-pitched voice. It flirts with the woman, and she adores it. Looks like our man's got moves, or does he? He angrily stares at the doll before shaking its head backwards. We cut to Billy practicing his ventriloquism while gazing upon the great Mr. Ingalls. His mom shouts at him to shut the lights, and he obliges. But when he does, an alternative flash of red and blue lights enter his room. It's the coppers. Billy peers out the window and finds that the local comedy club is on fire. As the blaze rages on, we once again have a look at Mr. Ingalls and his creepy doll. The last 15 years have been hectic for Billy. Billy has been driving for three days straight now and it's taking its toll. He hasn't slept much since leaving San Francisco, so when he finally arrives at Mr. Ingalls' house, he's exhausted and nervous. The windows are covered with newspaper, so Billy knocks on the door. But instead of Mr. Ingalls opening up right away like Billy had hoped, silence. Nothing but silence, followed by distant shouts telling him to get off his property. Billy persists though. He knows that all it takes is one person who believes in him to get started on his journey towards success as a ventriloquist. Mr. Ingalls peers out the window. Now's Billy's chance. He raises his dummy and gives it his best shot. The voice is terrible and his lips are clearly moving. Mr. Ingalls scoffs at the novice's poor technique and lets him in, probably out of pity. Billy walked in, his heart thumping in his chest. He was starstruck but the man was in no good mood. So what do you want? Mr. Ingalls snapped at Billy before he could even get a word out of his mouth. Billy couldn't help but be speechless as his eyes wandered around the room, taking in all the sides of Mr. Ingalls' successful career, pictures, posters, and a box with the name Morty written on it. Giddily, Billy reached for the box containing the puppet, but before he could touch it, Mr. Ingalls erupted. Don't touch that. Morty is retired, along with me. Then, Billy spots a newspaper detailing the fire that broke out at Mr. Ingalls' last show. A showgirl was burned to a crisp, and Mr. Ingalls' girlfriend was badly burned. That's right, I'm talking about his right hand. Curiously, Billy questions why he couldn't just perform with his left hand. Mr. Ingalls snickers at the thought. A left hand is good for opening doors, swatting flies, but the right is where the magic happens. Relatable. Anyway, his dummy days are long gone, but Billy's are just beginning. He had to know if he could do it if he was cut out to be a ventriloquist. He'd never been on stage before, and now he had the opportunity to perform in front of his idol, Mr. Ingalls. Billy had the pleasure of watching the master of his craft perform at the same club where he was about to take the stage for the first time. But before Billy could finish asking his idol to come, Mr. Ingalls turned him down flat. The man wouldn't even look at him as he said no. He just told Billy to leave. Billy took off with his tail between his legs but not before turning around and telling Mr. Ingalls that he was his idol. Mr. Ingalls stopped dead in his tracks and said he'd think about watching Billy perform. Tonight was supposed to be Billy's big night. He had been building up to this moment for years, and he was finally going to show the world what he was made of. He gathered himself together along with the other performers backstage and peeked out at the crowd. He couldn't believe his idol, Mr. Ingalls, was in attendance. Now he was extra nervous. But there was no time to think about it. It was showtime. He got on stage and began his routine, but all of a sudden, his ventriloquist dummy fell apart. The crowd booed, but Billy put it back together as quickly as possible. If they were going to boo him, they were at least going to get their money's worth. But then, things took a turn for the worse. Even when he managed to pull a joke together, the punchlines were so predictable that the crowd shouted them out before he could deliver them himself. And let's not even mention the fact that every time the dummy talks, Billy's mouth is wider than a well. You can practically see his tonsils. Mr. Ingalls looked on in shame before walking off stage completely soured by Billy's pitiful act. He cools off at a bar when a waitress starts hitting on him. You're kinda cute, she said. You remind me of my grandpa. That's weird, but okay. Mr. Ingalls told her to get lost. Then, Billy sheepishly approached. He knew his ventriloquist scent was a disaster tonight, but
but he couldn't bear to confront the fact that his life's dreams were crumbling before him. He needed comfort, and Mr. Ingalls reluctantly agreed to provide it. He knew all too well what it was like to have your dreams vanish before you. Billy departs, defeated. Suddenly, Mr. Ingalls feels something in his hand. He mutters to himself, no. But then, something seems to overtake him. He gets up and heads straight for the waitress, switching his mood up and offering to buy her a drink. Meanwhile, in a storm of emotions, Billy takes his dummy to a dumpster, smacking it across the side. Out of nowhere, a scream erupts. Billy looks at the doll before realizing it came from somewhere else. He runs towards the source and finds a woman in a car, sleeping, forever. He notes the smell of gas. Someone must have been trying to cover up the crime with a fire. Wait a minute. Billy rushes into Mr. Ingalls' house, almost falling as a floorboard gave out under his feet. He tussled with Mr. Ingalls, who was now just a frail old man, who begged Billy not to hurt him. Billy was ashamed that he ever looked up to him in the first place. It must have been him 15 years ago, and it must be him now. The scent of gas on him is undeniable. When faced with the accusations, Mr. Ingalls denies them, though admits to setting the fires. The real culprit, he claims, Morty. Billy was shook. There's no way that's true, Billy said, trying not to laugh at how ridiculous it was. Look, there are people out there that can understand and that can help you. Mr. Ingle shook his head and glared at Billy. I'm not crazy, he insisted. You think I hear voices in my head? Billy grinned and reached for Morty's container. He was determined to prove that Morty wasn't real. As he shifts through the container, Mr. Ingalls readies a knife and closes in. He slashes, but Billy dodges. He insists Billy have a close look, and what he finds is shocking. There's no head, but rather a mask. Mr. Ingalls reveals the truth. Morty is flesh and blood, just like him. In fact, he's his brother. And for the last 15 years, he kept his brother sedated in isolation. But Billy just had to come along and ruin things. Billy urges him to find his brother's influence stating that he's the ventriloquist and Morty's the dummy. Ooh, Morty did not take kindly to that. He claps back that he's the brains. He wrote all the material, all the jokes, and even his brother's lines. He's tired of being stuck. Tensions reach their peak as Mr. Ingalls brings the knife down, but not on Billy, on Morty. He chops away at his own brother before delivering a sick one-liner. I'm separating the act, he says. Brilliant. Mr. Ingalls exclaims that he's finally free only to be quickly countered by Morty, who states that he's the one who's finally tasting freedom. The little critter runs up on his brother and takes a fatal bite. Billy is terrified, but he finds the warm comfort of a bat. He violently swings it around, but can't quite catch the agile Morty. Fortunately, he eventually finds him perfectly positioned on that broken floorboard. With a decisive stomp down, he catapults Morty towards him. Batter up. He hits a perfect home run, with Morty landing in the meat grinder. Uh-oh. Morty pleads for mercy. He'll do anything. It doesn't take much convincing for Billy to see the possibilities. We cut to a future show of Billy's. He's now an excellent ventriloquist. And oh my, that's a familiar voice coming from the dummy. Suddenly, an attractive woman walks in, and Morty can't help himself. He cracks progressively cruder jokes, causing Billy to become uncomfortable. He threatens Morty under his breath, but the dummy continues. Turns out, Morty's changing the terms of their agreement. Billy feels a sudden pain. He clutches at the dummy, tearing off its false exterior. Morty is now a part of him. Moral of the story, don't be a dummy. <laughs> now hit that subscribe button.